Dr. Wayne Dyer said that no tree has branches so foolish enough to fight amongst themselves. So why is it that we fight so much? And if we looked at our family trees, why is there so much infighting? In this video, I'm going to reveal to you the two reasons behind why there's so much fighting and what we can do about it to stop it. So the first thing that you want to notice is what is leading up to this fighting. Why are we having so much fighting? So fighting starts with either a conflict or a competition. So let's break those down. So if you think about a competition, you might have competition amongst your siblings, even with your parents. You know, there's competitions all over the world all the time. So we should recognize that we are living in a competitive world. You know, and we think that com competition and competitiveness is a good thing. You know, that's why we have sports. We have stadiums, massive stadiums, multi-million dollar stadiums and multi-million dollar professional sports and events that are established around conflict, around competition. So what are we, what are we saying here? You know, if you look back even to the days of the gladiators and other competitions, they were all about people getting stronger and bigger and the, you know, the strongest one wins and so on. But here's what happens. Once you have a competition, and let's say this is a soccer game. So you have a soccer game and there's a competition going on. It's on the field. So it's on the field and people are competing. You're cheering your team on. You have your flags and, and, you know, your, your memorabilia. You have all sorts of things that are supporting these teams and supporting them to win. And you want them to win. But on the other side of the stadium or even right next to you, there are people that are cheering on the other team. So you're in effect against them. You're in competition with them as well. Not just with the teams on the field. You're in competition with others. And, you hear this all the time that, you know, who are you a fan of? Oh, I'm a fan of the Royals. Oh, uh, and I'm a fan of the, the Lakers or whatever. You know, so it's all about who is the strongest and who is going to get your vote. So competition is one of the reasons why we have so much infighting. It's why these branches, you know, these we have so much infighting amongst each other and we're constantly looking to win. We're constantly looking to be right. We want to be more powerful. Because we want more power, we are willing to compete against somebody else. So if you even think about your neighborhood, we're competing against our neighbors in many instances. Maybe not you, but there's always people that are competing. Why? Because they want to be the best. They want to have the nicest grass, the best garden, the most beautiful house, and, and they want to be recognized and acknowledged for the effort and time and energy they put into their property. So they are competing against you. So there's competitions at all levels. But competition generally will lead to conflict. Why? Because now you're at odds with each other. You're not trying to be collaborative. You're not trying to come together. You're not trying to be in harmony. You're not. You want to be separate. You want to be stronger. You want to be better. That's what's at the core of competition. So again, back to the sports analogy. So you're in a star soccer stadium and you're cheering on teams and you're cheering on your team and your team scores and you raise your glass and it spills on the person in front of you. They're voting for the other team. They're there for the other team and you spill it on them. They look at you. They can see that you're wearing, you know, the, the Lakers shirt and they're for the Royals and they get angry at you. And then what do they do? They lash out. They throw their drink at you. They grab you. They try to fight you. They try to hit you. They try to hurt you. So now you have conf not only comp competition going on, you have a conflict. So this is what's happening in life. You know, we have competitions and then conflict. And sometimes one starts before the other or one leads the other. But the key here is that you are always going to see these two core aspects in every single fight, conflict and competition. And so then you have this conflict and you're in a stadium and somebody fights you and they they get angry with you they throw their drinks at you and they try to grab you and and you try to get away and next thing you know security comes and security takes you and them one in each hand takes you away and then brings you into a room and then sits you down and what do they do they separate you so separation is the outcome of conflict and competition so if you think about it separation is going to be always the outcome 
it's always, always out, you know, outcome. Even in nature, if you look at ducks, there are two male ducks fighting for a female. They're fighting in the pond, they're pecking at each other, and they're flapping their wings, and they're battling each other. And then a few moments later, they go to the each, each end of the pond. Somebody becomes the victor. The other one is the loser. They flap their wings, and that's it. It's finished. So they don't hang on in any residual energy. They don't, they don't keep conflicting with each other. But they separated, right? And we should take note of the, what nature does. They separate and they don't, you know, keep building the story and have a scenario around it and tell others and, and keep it going. They don't do that. They just let it go. What do we do as humans? We hang on to it. We tell others and, and we talk about the injustice of it and, uh, you know, we take people to court and, and all sorts of things and we drag it on. So that's what we do. So we have this infighting going on all the time. And, you know, like the trees of our branch, we're fighting against each other and eventually, you know, we'll kill the roots. We'll kill the, the tree and, and the roots. And so we kill it just by being in conflict and competition with each other. And we're always tapping into our emotions when this is happening. So, in, a, in an environment where there's a sports a sporting event going on, like a soccer game, we are feeling good, we're, we're joyful, we're cheering on our team, so we're expressing joy. And then a moment later, after our team has scored and we spill that drink on the person in front of us, then they're angry at us. And then what do we do? We go down to their level. We lower our power and we get angry and we start fighting with them. So now we've gone from joy to anger. And then afterwards, uh, once security has taken us and, and then the police come, <laughs> we, we might go into sadness. So now we've had three different emotions that we've gone through just to go from con uh, competition and conflict, now separation, and the emotion that we went from was excitement and joy. Excitement is actually in there too. So excitement and joy to anger and then sadness. The only things we're missing are, are fear and disgust. So, and y if you think about this for a moment, Fear, by the way, is at one end of the spectrum. Faith is at the other end of the spectrum. We classify fear as an emotion, yet we don't have faith as emotions. So could faith be an emotion? Fear is something that hasn't happened, so it's not even real in here right now. It's not, it's an illusion. And so is faith. If we have something in it that we're faithful about in the future, it hasn't happened yet. So why wouldn't we make faith an emotion? We could. You know, it's possible. So something to think about. But anyway, the point here is that, as I was saying in the beginning, no tree has branches so foolish, foolish enough to fight, fight amongst themselves. And what are we doing? We constantly find ways to fight against each other. We're competing. We're conflicting. And then we ended up being separated. We see this all the time. Divorce, you know, is a separation. So what happened that led up to that? There might have been a conflict, or there is a conflict likely, but there might have been competition as well. You know, there might have been two couples that are A-types and they're very strong-willed, strong-minded and they're trying to be the best and they want to be recognized the most and so they're competing against each other and then they end up uh, being in a conflict because they can't agree and they end up uh, even separating in the house and then eventually they just separate property, you know, separate houses and then eventually divorce happens and they're completely separated and, and they go their separate ways. Uh, but just notice, Conflict and competition are always going to be in our lives and in our world, at least for the next hundred years or maybe a thousand years. Who knows? But it's been part of our history up until this point that it is part of human nature. And we can't go against that. But what you can do is just recognize it. Just recognize when there's a conflict or competition. And the easiest way to handle this is to separate yourself as soon as you recognize there's a conflict or competition. I see this all the time with my children. They are having a competition of some kind and then that leads to a conflict and right away if I'm anywhere near them I can just say hey guys are, are we having a conflict here or you know you're you're, you're not agreeing on something uh, yes good okay well let's just move to the next phase separation and so now they understand what conflict competition separation is they move to separation uh, and all that we do is is say one of you pick a room and the other one go in another room. Take five minutes, we set a timer, and then I just check in on them and see how it's going. If they haven't calmed down yet, they're still angry, I give them some more time, another five minutes, and then when they've calmed down, then we can talk. Because, as I've said before, when emotions are high, intelligence is low. Emotions high, intelligence low. Intelligence goes down. We're not thinking. We're not thinking clearly. We're not really in our conscious thinking mind. We're in our subconscious mind. And we're going back to 
uh, times when we got angry when we were a child and how we reacted to those events. And that's how we're responding to this particular event here now, based on what we know. That's it. So what you can do is go right to separation. Once you see there's a conflict or competition, even in your own life, in your own interactions with others. So if you find yourself competing or conflicting with somebody else, just know that separation is coming. It's around the corner. So you might as well move to that next step as fast as you can. Separate, calm down, come back, and then you can communi communicate effectively. Otherwise, you might keep conflicting, 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 and then you eventually separate, but then you carry that energy with you and you end up calling others and emailing others and talking about the injustice of it or you post something online and complain about it and then if you complain about it you get in what's called the victim loop i'll put the victim loop uh below um you can see what that is you want you don't want to be in the victim loop you want to be in accountability you want to be living a great life and moving forward so being in the victim loop is horrible uh, unfortunately a lot of people are in the victim loop and just recognize if you are you can get out and you have to you have to be intentional and then move up to accountability and then that's where you can avoid conflict and competition as much as possible and not fight amongst the people that you love the most so this is all about you and how you can get control over your emotions why because conflict and competition are part of our society part of our community part of our culture but you don't have to get caught in that feedback loop you don't have to be a part of that you don't have to participate you can choose not to participate and remove yourself and be separate. You don't have to listen to what's going on. You don't have to participate in it. You don't have to conflict with others. Everybody has their own perspectives and opinions. We just have to respect those and let them be. And if they want to conflict or compete with us, let them. You know, I've said to people before that want to fight me because they like fighting and they really want to fight me. They want to fist fight and for some reason. And I just say, hey, if you want to fight, join the army. Uh, you know, it's kind of a funny joke, but you know what? It gets them to calm down because it's like you know I, I'm not here to fight I, I'm not a fighter and uh, granted I could fight but I, I don't want to uh, but you don't have to fight you don't have to conflict you don't have to compete you don't have to go against the people that you care and love the most you know think about your family and your family trees and, and even if you have a business because I work with a lot of business people if you have a team of people you don't want to have any infighting any infighting is going to cause conflicts it's going to be those weak links in the chain and if you have weak links in the chain you're going to have problems and your business is your business will go down and people will not want to be interacting with you or buying your services and that's separation right so if you have conflict going on in your business you're likely going to have problems with clients and then clients are going to separate so you see how this all filters outward and downward so you want to eliminate this as much as possible so this is Daniel Fave thanks for watching my video as, as usual well thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye